Welcome to the Incident Sequence Rapid Fire Trigger tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to cover how to use the Rapid Fire Trigger in the Incident Sequence dialog box. So I will first launch the Incident Sequence dialog box and you'll notice under uh, on this row that says Trigger everything is, says Normal. That's the default. I'm going to change it to Rapid Fire. And you notice as soon as I do it changes the theme to one pixel uh, so that becomes the default for rapid fire, but you can change that. But for the sake of this, uh, of demonstrating how rapid fire works, I'm going to use this default of one pixel. And then I'm also going to disable all the rows except row one by selecting none for the TCM here. So we're just going to use TCM one on row one. And let's look at the timing map because the timing map is very important for rapid fire. Um, you see in this timing map there are some rows that don't have any check marks and row one doesn't have any check marks so if we were to try to do instant sequence nothing would happen because there's uh, if there's no check marks here then there's no triggers being generated um, so to put some check marks all across here uh, you can just say set freak spectrum but I'm going to uncheck this it says set theme color and movement because uh, with this checked, if I click on this button, it's going to set some defaults for the theme color and movement. And I don't want to uh, change what I already have set, so I will uncheck that. I set Set Freak Spectrum, and you notice some check marks went all across here. So now, and I, I could have done it this way, but I want to go ahead and do low to high. And uh, you see the two lowest frequencies... Um, got selected here. If we were in the normal trigger type, uh, these would be combined and treated as one trigger that every time any notes happen in either one of the, these, uh, then it gets triggered. But it, anyway, just just think of it as it treats it as uh, one trigger. But with rapid fire, it treats it as two separate triggers. And so you get more triggers, and that's why I call it rapid fire. So let's go back here to the instant sequence dialog box and uh, I think we're ready oh we gotta open an audio file I'm gonna use hallelujah chorus it <clears throat> and then I'm gonna say sequence all And then you should see some effects up here, and you don't see any. Well, that's because there's no low notes at the beginning of this song. If we scroll over, we'll see some effects here. So let's play this, and we'll see what it looks like. And notice every time one of those low notes get hit, it scoots this uh, one pixel along. Now, it's not moving very fast, and that's because we only have two... Uh, frequency selected. If we say have eight of them selected, we're going to get, get more triggers. Let's do sequence all. And you notice we, we have more triggers being generated. Let's play this and uh, see what it looks like. You notice it's moving much faster, and every once in a while you get a, it leaves a trail. Uh, that's that's okay. That's just what it does. But you see, it's 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 moving much faster now. To the the maximum number of triggers you're going to uh, generate is if you say all freaks. If if you have this check mark checked, it's the same as having all of these checked. So if we do this. It's going to really scoot along. Um, and see, now we have stuff being generated from the beginning of the song because it's responding to all frequencies. So let's play this. And you see, it's really scooting along really fast. And what I, what I like about Rapid Fire is that it it's responsive to the whole song better with with the normal triggers it's like it's either triggered or it's not and it, and the more intense parts of the uh, song 
don't necessarily produce any more effects than the less intense parts. But with rapid fire, the more intense parts of the song makes the the thing scoot along more. Now you could uh, you could make that change color. You know, right now it's white, but we could do um, RG but the RGBW by group and realize that um, with well, let's go ahead and do sequence all with um, with rapid fire. See, see with the normal um, trigger, every time a trigger happens, it would rotate through red, green, blue, and white. But with rapid fire, there's so many triggers being generated that I changed how that works. If you look up here, you see you see a series of red ones and then a green one and then some blue ones. And if we scroll, we can see it, it changes through red, green, and blue. And the way it decides when to change is whenever there's a gap. But as long as there's a, a, a bunch of uh, effects all close together, it keeps the same color. So let's play this, and you'll see how this looks. You see, as soon as there is a long enough gap, it changes color. And, of course, you can set uh, custom colors here. If, if you wanted to just change through through red, orange, and yellow, you could do that. And, and then ch here you would choose uh, custom colors one by group. And like I said, with rapid fire, uh, by group and by effect are the same thing. It, it, it just goes by the gap that's between um, there. So if we do sequence all here, it actually, it's going to, it generated the same effects, it's just that it's cycling through red, orange, and yellow. So let's play this, and, and you'll see there's the red. It did orange really short, there's yellow, there's red again. There's orange, uh, there's yellow. Anyway, so you can cycle through whatever colors you want. Um, now next I'm going to demonstrate that you can you can change how it moves like you can say um, right now we, we had it set on right same row well you can go up same column and we uh, I know it's confusing these directions on here uh, the right only makes sense if this was a horizontal matrix and since it's a vertical right ends up meaning down and up ends up meaning going to the right but anyway let's let's try this and what it's going to do is it's going to go across and now that that's sort of interesting uh, you, you might like that effect but it goes across so fast that you don't even see it moving across so what you could do is say up multi-column and now every time it hits the end it's going to go down a column there you see how it's, it's moving down but I'm going to show you how um, you can do some pretty cool things by doing this um, if you just do up same column and change to uh, another effect one that I like is morphs separating um, you get some interesting stuff here let's do sequence all and we'll see how this looks What it's doing is it's using that effect and it's very quickly moving it along the whole uh, width of the um, the display here. Now, one advantage of this is that, as some of you know, it, with the normal trigger, you're limited to 24 rows because um, in this dialog box it only has room for 24 and in the uh, timing map it only has... 24 rows across here. Well, now that you can move the effect across the rows, 
you're not limited by um, by the number of rows. So we could go change this layout to something really big, such as 48. If you had a a matrix or a mega tree that had lots of ribbons in it, let's say you had 48 of them. Um, let's do sequence all. And now let's see what this looks like. You can see it goes across the whole width. You're not limited to 24 anymore. And it looks pretty cool. So this is a way to uh, sequence, uh, use infinite sequence on more than, um, more than the 24 rows. Now, I don't know, we, we, it, 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 it gets really active if, if you have all freaks, although I mean, they look cool, but I'm, I'm going to do the middle frequencies here and, and it, Let's see what that looks like. We'll do play stop all. And you might prefer it not moving so fast there. And you could uh, play around with what frequencies you want it to be responsive to. And so that's that. I, now I want to go back. Okay, I also want to show how to use the VU meter setting here. Um, we select VU meter and then you want to go back to the one pixel um, theme and then for VU meter you, you want to set it uh, a bunch of frequencies all across the spectrum and you there, there's nothing you can't use set free spectrum to do this you have to go through and manually set these I've gone through and set made it so there's six check marks for each of the 12 rows that I've gone back to now um, you want at least five or six selected or else uh, ra rapid fire isn't going to uh, do its thing. It, it only works well if you have at least five or six uh, selected. So we, and what we want to do is use TCM1 across every single row here. So it's going to use TCM1 which has rapid fire and um, one pixel and I'm going to go back to using white here which, where did white go? There it is and we'll do sequence all and you notice now since we have uh, all these selected there's there's some effects on all of the rows up here um, let's shrink this down so we can see all 12 of them you can see at the beginning there's no low notes that's why rows these first few rows don't have any effects in them, but if we scroll down, you see that it eventually does. So let's play this and we'll see how it looks. Um, and it's it's really not a VU meter, but it sort of looks like one. And like I said, the more the more check marks you put on here, the more responsive it's going to be. And you can also affect how active active it is by uh, changing the sensitivity. I just changed it to three. Uh, let's see what it does there. You see, we get less effects being generated, and so it's it's a little bit less active. Uh, but anyway, you can you choose the sensitivity that you like here. And then another thing to show here is for the movement, it, this 1.0 means move it one pixel every trigger. So uh, that controls, you know, that means these one pixels are being moved down one. And 
uh, and then when there's a gap, they get moved back up to the beginning. That's how VU meter works. It's that that's all it's doing is whenever there's a gap, it moves the starting point back up to the top. And right now, there is no way to put it at the bottom. I'm sorry, it, that's I'll do that next year. But VU meter is always going to be at the top right now. But if you wanted to, you can stretch it out. If, if you said uh, two pixels, and then you move 2.1 every trigger, it's going to uh, each trigger is going to be twice as big and it's going to move twice as far. So you see these lines end up being longer. And then, of course, you could make it change through different colors if you want. We can say um, RGBW here. But since each each row is stepping through the red, green, blue, and white independently, you get sort of a randomized effect here. If you wanted them to all change color together, you would say color by time. And now every two seconds, it's going to change the color. You see how they all change together up here? So it's going to first be red and then change to green. And and blue and then go and white and then it's going to go back to red. Another thing you can do with rapid fire is you can do random dots uh, and that's sort of interesting how that works. If we say random points here and uh, let's let's go back to just using one uh, one using him on one row if we say sequence all, um, okay, yeah, again, he didn't he didn't produce anything until here. Let's play this and see what happens. And what it does is it it randomly it takes these two pixels, and every time there's a trigger, it just randomly places them on the uh, thing here. And it's sort of, it's a little bit weird how it works in that, see, you could take any, you could take three sags, or it doesn't matter what it is. Um, it's going to take the pixels in that thing and randomly spread them out all over the place. But since this effect has more pixels in it, it's going to, you get more stuff happening here. Um, now, I think that's a little bit, too intense and so the way I would use it is you know you could do the five pixel thing and and then you know you get five times as many pixels being produced as if we were using one pixel now we, if we went to all freaks, then that's going to generate more also. And it's going to be responsive to all of the frequencies in the song. Let's start at the beginning here. And so this is a cool thing that you can use to uh, create like a a background. You could do this and then do some effects on top of this uh, manually. And so that's a good introduction to uh, rapid fire and uh, I think that's gonna do it for this. And I might say that this was rapid fire on uh, on some pixels, on a matrix of pixels. There's also another tutorial on using rapid fire on uh, regular lights that are not pixels. And so I invite you to to watch that one also. Thank you and have a super day.